Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing fantastically well. It is Connor here, and we are back with a weekend edition of the Rumour Mill. Good golly, it is hot here in Yorkshire. That is fantastic news because it's been drizzle, miserable rain, and no shine. So I hope you've got your coffee, your tea, your wine, your beer, uh, wherever you are uh, on this beautiful place that we call Planet Earth. Here we are again, guys. So the Rumour Mill today, stick around till the end because we've got some big news towards the end, uh, some really good news regarding Leeds United, official bids going in really uh, consolidated rumors we hope we hope but listen there's been a lot of insight from the phil hay show of course the second best podcast on the network behind the blue white and yellow go check it out guys i'm joking phil hay is god tier elite tier uh, what a fantastic gentleman it's great to see him on the mend as well but listen leeds united have made an official bid for christopher clarson uh, what we were speaking about the other day was that leeds were interested victor Otter had gone there he was uh, speaking to the agent of, of Klaassen, he was speaking to the club we didn't know that an official bid has gone in but according to numerous reports today from the Norwegian side Leeds United have had an official bid put in for Klaassen which is great, uh, Bakahag as well who was a journalist on the Norwegian side was actually speaking about an individual called Aaron Donham who's a, a Norwegian uh, an individual who's gone to play for a Norwegian side the first foreign player actually uh, to play for this individual side um, and at the bottom of the tweet it was quite cryptic. He just put Klaassen next out. Now, I think all signs to this one, guys, are that it is going to happen. The reasoning behind that, Freddie Woodman looks like he's going to be going to a championship club, even though Leeds allegedly made a cash bid, according to Lee Ryder at the Newcastle Chronicle, a very, very good source for all your Newcastle news. It looks a little bit like, as well, that the Levante goalkeeper isn't really sort of third tier, but it looks like with Klaassen, we've been chasing him for two years now, and we know with Victor Orta, we know with Marcel so that database doesn't just get thrown in the bin. Those individuals don't get thrown in the bin. We, we are an opportunistic club. Will that come up again? Is that going to come up again? Dan James went to Manchester United, but I bet Leeds United have kept tabs on him. 100%. You saw it with Ben White, didn't you? The Newport link, the Peterborough link, Leeds still kept tabs. So that database is still very, very relevant. And it's very fascinating to see uh, Leeds United going in and, and still having a vested interest in certain players. But listen, Klaassen's going to come in and be a real challenger for Elan Melier. I was speaking a lot about getting experience in and I felt that was the way forward. I really did. And I'm going to stand by my sword with this one. I felt it was the way forward because that individual would be able to coax Elan Melier through the Premier League season. We saw it with even Kiko Casir to an extent. If you believe in the off uh, the sort of off-field reports, Kiko Casir was a little bit of a mentor for Elan Melier. I feel Leeds have to replace that. You know, Kiko has whatever you may say about him. He's got, what, three Champions League medals. He's been at Real Madrid. He's been around big personalities. So he understands the big games, even though I personally don't feel he, he thrived in the big games as an individual. But experience is absolutely vital. And I, I felt Leeds had to replace that. It doesn't look like we're going down that route. It looks like we're going for someone in class and who's an up-and-coming, very, very good goalkeeper with a lot of interest around Europe for his services. Leeds have got in there. Leeds have allegedly put a bid in. I do think it will get done. And we're going to have a goalkeeper there who Victor Orta will be selling to him. You're going to be competing with Elan Mele for that number one shirt. You could be playing in the Premier League for Leeds United under Marcelo Bielsa week in, week out. And I feel that is going to elevate Mele's game, which is great to see and probably the best strategy to go forward with. Let me know what you guys want. Did you, do you want to go experience or did you want to go with youth? It looks like Leeds United have gone with youth, which is fine by me. As I say, 50 games already under his belt this guy isn't just a, a novice coming into the game which is great to see also on the Phil Hay show there was a lot of discussion really uh, about about transfers in transfers out rumors here rumors there and, and an interesting thing that came out from it was Helder Costa um, now we've all been talking about the Dan James saga recently haven't we with Sancho going to Manchester United is there going to be an opening there for Leeds to go in for Dan James you know we were speaking last year before Rafinha was signed about Dan James potentially coming to Leeds on loan, but Solskjaer wanted to keep him round the place. Just, I don't know, for pumping pom-poms or playing against Leeds, whatever it, whatever his, his season entailed at Manchester United. It wasn't that uh, forthcoming, was it? But with Helder Costa, uh, apparently there is interest from Valencia, which is, it's a big it's a big compliment for uh, Helder Costa. You know, a, a very, very prestigious side. We know, you know, we've, we've had battles with Valencia before and, and it's one of those where, you know, it just it does show that the profile of Helder Costa is still significant. Now, my question to you guys would be, if we went and got a Dan James, 
as a as a sort of replacement for Helder Costa, or we already had him lined up and then Costa had to go to feed that transfer, would you be happy with that? I see them as sort of similar calibre in terms of ability, but how I see it with Dan James, he's, he's a lot younger, and I think with Marcelo Bielsa getting his claws into him, this guy could go up a couple of levels. Now, I still think there's a, a yardstick of potential to get out of Dan James. I really believe that because he's only a young lad. But with Helder Costa, I feel like he's hit his ceiling now. He's tried it with Wolves before, didn't work. Tried it with Leeds now, it's never fully worked. With Dan James, there is bags of potential there. And I'm not saying this one's going to get done, by the way, guys. But if Manchester United make him available 15 to 20 million, would Leeds invest in that? We know this market's going to be very opportunistic for Leeds United in terms of if there are certain people available. We might not be looking for that position, but if someone's available of high calibre, like it was last year with Rafinha, Leeds will go in and do that deal. Now, that brings, brings me on really nicely to Javi Galan. Now, Huesca were relegated from La Liga to La Liga 2 and nothing's gone on with Galan yet. Roman Perot was obviously moved to Southampton. We've seen Junior Firpo move to Leeds United. Javi Galan's been the one who's a little bit stuck in the mud out of the whole trio which was on the rumour mill for many weeks. Apparently now there is a clause in Galan's contract because of relegation which enables him to leave the club for 4 million euros which is an it's a steal, isn't it? It's an absolute steal if you've watched anything of Galan. And AS are reporting that Leeds are still very much interested in Galan acquiring his services. Now, with the movement on of Leif Davis, with the nowhere near for me first team starter ready of, of, of Niall Huggins, is that something Leeds will do? The transfer isn't that great. Obviously, he's a La Liga 2 player as it stands. Is he going to be demanding that that much in terms of wages? Is he going to expect to start week in, week out? With his qualities, you'd expect so. But it seems like Sevilla are flirting a little bit. No one's put an official bid in yet. Leeds are still testing the water. Is that something we could do? And they could battle it out, as Melier and Klaassen might do, for the goalkeeper top. Are we going to get someone like you know Firpo and Galan battling it out for the left-back role? If we're looking at the same premise as Melier and Klaassen, I'd actually quite like that. And it's not bad having two world-class left-backs on your hand, is it? You know, if one maybe dips out of form. Let me know in the comment section below what you would do there. Because obviously, we've still got Mr. Versatile. Uh, what is key? V versatility, like I always say. We've still got Dallas there who can do a job if Firpo's ever not there. Is there a necessity to go for Gallon? Who knows? Probably not. Um, Nahit Nandez, my thoughts on it. Let's get rid of it. I mean, Phil, I mean, we've, we've been commenting on it on Leeds Live all week now. The Blue, White and Yellow podcast, we spoke on it. It's never been a starter. It's a starter from the, their end. It's, it's always been a starter. We've always heard a, a, about it from uh, Curiello de Sport. We've heard it from Calcio Mercato. We've never heard it from the Leeds end. I think Leeds were interested in Nandez, and we've heard that from several sources. Nothing was ever consolidated. Leeds ain't paying that money for a player uh, like that. I think, I think as I said at the start, it's opportunism for Leeds United in this, in this window, and, and that just wouldn't make sense. Um and that's it, really, guys. That is going to be it on the room mill today. I hope you enjoy your weekend. As you can tell, I am sweating buckets. It is, it's warm here, and it's Saturday morning. What is going on? I'm jealous of all you in Argentina, Australia. I know you all comment on my videos, wherever you are, Norway, and you get this weather consistently. Us Brits, us Yorkshire, us Yorkshire lot don't get this, and it's been a bit of a miserable time. But if you wouldn't... If you would, do me a favour. As I always say, like, comment and subscribe, guys. It means the world to me. As I say, the 62% who aren't subscribed to my videos but watch it every single day. What's the point? Hit that subscribe button, guys. It does me a world of good. And uh, let me know what you think on the rumours. And yeah, that would that'd, that'd make a... A real good chat, wouldn't it? I'll get back to you in the comment section below and we will be back potentially tomorrow if something comes out. If it doesn't, I will see you on Monday, guys. Have a good one. I hope your family and friends are happy and healthy and I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.